Okay, so welcome to this next video in the uh, playlist on voltage gated ion channels. And in this video, what we're going to discuss is the patch clamp and uh, how what and the um, developments that it gave uh, to our understanding of uh, the mechanism of voltage gated ion channels. So basically, the patch clamp is a very similar idea to the voltage clamp except that it's on a smaller scale. So in the voltage clamp, what we did is we had, uh, let's say, a squid giant axon, going back to Hodgkin and Huxley. Uh, then we had the squid giant axon, and we uh, had a voltage clamp which was going to clamp uh, the electrical potential difference across the membrane. And what we did is we put uh, the voltage clamp between the intracellular and the extracellular component, and then we had some uh, battery keeping um, keeping the electrical potential at a certain value, basically. And it should be the other way around, so this one should be the big one. Okay, uh, so... Um, and this kept it at minus 65 millivolts across that membrane, basically. Now, in the case of the patch clamp, what we're going to do is what we get is like a tiny little pipette kind of thing, like this. And we just take out a tiny little bit of membrane, basically. So we take out a tiny little bit of membrane and we put it at the end of that pipette. And this is the idea of the patch clamp, that you can take a tiny sample of membranes. If I draw this pipette up much bigger, you have a pipette like that. And then you can take this tiny little sample of membrane, which I'll put here. And basically, what you can get is you can get a single voltage-gated ion channel in that bit of membrane. So we can put in, uh, like, a single voltage-gated sodium channel, let's say, here. Uh, so here is a single voltage-gated sodium channel in a suspended in a little piece of membrane that we've taken up with our pipette like this. And this allows us to investigate the properties of a single ion channel. So this is a voltage-gated sodium channel voltage gated sodium channel and basically what we're going to do voltage gated sodium channel what we're going to do is uh, we are going to fix the electrical potential across the membrane of this using a, uh, a patch clamp so let's say this is this represents the extracellular domain and this represents the intracellular domain then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, a battery here and we're going to fix the electrical potential difference across here using effectively the same mechanism as the patch clamps. We just attach a battery here so that we ensure that this side over here is negative 65 millivolts uh, when compared to the, ex uh, the electrical potential of, the, uh, of this side, which represents the extracellular domain. So whatever the electrical potential of this electrical potential of this um, portion is, uh, this, the electrical potential here is negative 65 millivolts of that, basically. And that's what this, um, putting this battery like this assures you, because the battery will only be in equilibrium when the electrical potential difference between this electrode and this electrode is negative 65. And basically, this electrode has been attached to this half over here, and this electrode has been attached to this uh, compartment here. Uh, so um, they're, they're going, the, this electrode is going to go into equilibrium with this electrode, and this electrode is going to go into equilibrium with this compartment over here. Okay, so you're going to assure basically that this compartment is negative, uh, sorry, this compartment, this intracellular compartment is also negative 65 of this compartment because that's the only way this battery will be happy basically. Oh, at all the other points, something will be happening inside the battery to turn it into this state basically. This is the only state where you'll reach, you'll be at equilibrium. Okay, so what happens now is uh, that we, um, that we rate, that we use a stimulating electrode to raise the electrical potential difference, uh, so this is a stimulating electrode, we're going to raise the electrical potential difference uh, across this uh, membrane, basically, from extracellular to intracellular. So what you can imagine doing is we're going to pull off electrons uh, from the intracellular compartment into this stimulating electrode to make this less negative, basically. Uh, so this is a this basically is a movement of electrons out here and that basically is going to cause uh, this to become more positive so it's going to the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment is going to raise is going to rise basically uh, so um, the um, 
electrical potential difference from the extracellular to the intracellular is also going to rise. So let's say it rises up to plus uh, to up to minus 40 millivolts, basically. So we're going to rise it up to minus 40, raise it up to minus 40 millivolts. And I'm putting rise and raise in the wrong uh, the wrong circumstances. Okay, so it's going to raise it up to minus 40 millivolts. At minus 40 millivolts, what is going to happen is that this voltage gated sodium channel is going to become activated. Basically, uh, it's going to be activated by going to that. Um, negative 40 millivolts. So basically, what we're now going to do is we're going to look, we're going to put in an ammeter here, and we're going to look at the elect at the charge that is go sorry, at the current which is going to flow between these two in order to maintain uh, it at minus 60 millivolts. So basically, what we're going to look at is time versus current, basically. Now, uh, we, we need to say which direction we're going to uh, look at current from. So we'll say we're looking at current from the intracellular to the extracellular, let's say. Okay, uh, so basically, if we open this voltage-gated sodium channel, when we get to... Well, actually, firstly, we're going to stimulate this. We're going to take electrons out from... Um, from this intracellular compartment. That's going to raise you up to minus 40 millivolts. So let's say originally we were we had no current going through here because we were at equilibrium. So we were originally at minus 65 millivolts and the battery was perfectly happy. Then what we did is we applied the stimulating electrode. That took electrons out of here and that raised the electrical potential difference across this membrane to minus 40 millivolts. What then is going to happen is that the battery isn't going to like that. It's going to want to return this electrical potential difference to negative 65 millivolts. The way in which it's going to do that is by moving electrons from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. So, uh, you're going to have electrons moving this way, basically. And if electrons move from the extracellular to the intracellular, then that uh, electrons have a negative charge, basically. So you are moving negative charge from the extracellular to the intracellular. That is the same as moving... Po that's, uh, as far as charge is concerned, that's the same as moving positive charge from the intracellular to the extracellular. So basically, the current is going to go up like this in response to the stimulating electrode. So I hope you understand that. Remember, this current, what this means, is it means the coulombs per second which move from... Um, the, um, from the intracellular uh, electrode, this electrode, to this electrode, basically. Um, we are saying that electrons are going to have to move from the extracellular to the intracellular to, maintain, to return this back down to negative 65 millivolts. That is the movement of negative charge in this direction, basically. So that's the same effect of this, moving positive charge in the opposite direction, from the intracellular to the extracellular. And that's why we've got this positive peak here, uh, because Moving negative charge this way is the same as moving positive charge that way. So we have a positive current from intracellular to extracellular. Okay, so now what happens is... Uh, so that, that, that little peak there was taking care of the stimulating electrode. So basically, after that little peak has occurred, what that represents is the ex is electrons flowing from the extracellular to the intracellular. So they're returning the electrical potential difference across this membrane to negative 65 millivolts. However, for a moment there, the electrical potential was at negative 40 millivolts, and that was enough, basically, to stimulate these voltage-gated sodium channel, or this single voltage-gated sodium channel. So what happens is you... S is that this electric is that this voltage gated sodium channel uh, oh, will open in response to the negative 40 millivolts but we don't know when it's going to open we, we it just seems probabilistic basically and we will go into the mechanism by which uh, voltage gated channels open but basically what you get is at some point you'll get us um, well sorry no at some point this channel will open basically uh, and what that will do is it will move sodium ions from the extracellular to the intracellular, so it will allow sodium to move this way. If you are going to move sodium from the extracellular to the intracellular, uh, then that will make this electrical potential difference more positive because you're bringing positive charge from the extracellular to the intracellular, so it's going to raise the electrical potential difference across this membrane. So to stop that happening, the voltage clamp is basically going to have to move electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular. But we've already said that if you move electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular, that corresponds to a positive peak here because you are, um, you are moving negative coulombs in this direction, which is the same as moving positive charge in the opposite direction. So if we look, we're looking at the current from the intracellular to the extracellular, that's going to be positive when you move negative charge 
from the extracellular to the intracellular. Okay, so it's going to look like some sort of peak as like that, basically. And basically what happens is that this sodium channel opens for a second and then it closes again. So it opens for a little amount of time and then closes, basically. So this is the uh, voltage-gated sodium channel opening. Voltage-gated sodium channel opening. Gated sodium channel opening. Okay, and this peak here, remember, is the, um, is the uh, stimulating electrode, the one corresponding to the correction uh, of the stimulating electrode. And basically what you find is that if you repeat this experiment again and again and again, it's not always, it, the so voltage-gated sodium channel doesn't always open at the same time. So basically what you might get is another one that looks like, um, maybe it opens quicker, so you have another one that looks like that maybe. They always look the same sort of pattern, I, it opens and it closes, uh, but you can't really... Uh, you can't really say exactly when it's going to actually open, so you might have another one that looks like that. However, what you get is that um, you get a probability distribution for when they'll open. So they're more likely to open nearer the start, basically. So they're more likely to open over here than they are, for instance, to open uh, ages later. So what you get is that if you sum up um, the effect of opening loads of them. So if you repeat this experiment hundreds of times, you get a whole series of different ones. And if you sum them all up, what you effectively get is something that looks like um, looks like um, this, basically, where it opens and then closes like that. So basically, this is the combined effect of opening and closing absolutely loads of them, in other words. Uh, so... Um, in a normal cell membrane, if we go back to the physiological situation, there is not just one voltage-gated sodium channel sitting there. There are absolutely loads of voltage-gated sodium channels, and they're all going to be all going to respond. So, if this membrane is depolarized to negative 40 millivolts, then they're all uh, going to start opening. But they're all going to open at different times. And basically, if you sum the effect of them all opening and closing, you get an overall sodium current. You over you get an overall sodium current, and it looks more like this basically. Okay, uh, so if you sum up all of these and combine them all together, you get something that overall looks like that, basically. Um, and so they're more likely to open earlier on than they are to open further apart away, uh, further, uh, further after uh, the initial depolarization by the stimulating electrode. Okay, so let me just discuss again what this actually means, because remember what these, this is showing us is the movement of negative charge from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. So these correspond, these peaks correspond to the movement of electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular. But remember those that movement of electrons exactly matches the movement of sodium ions, because the sodium ion has a charge of plus one, so if I draw the sodium ion on here, the sodium ion has a charge of plus one, and electrons have the charge of minus one. So every sodium you bring in here through this voltage-gated sodium channel, there's going to have to be a compensating electron coming through here. So basically, these can be interpreted to mean the uh, flow of sodium through the voltage-gated sodium channel. So uh, when we sum them all up, we get a flow of sodium that looks more like what you actually see when you do the uh, two electro voltage clamp on the whole cell membrane. So that's good. Everything's sort of fitting together, basically. Uh, so that's the uh, voltage-gated sodium channel, but you can do a very similar thing for the voltage-gated potassium channel. Uh, so uh, we can put in... Um, uh, we can get a piece of membrane with a voltage-gated potassium channel in rather than a voltage-gated sodium channel in. Okay. Uh, so I'll draw him here. Here is a voltage-gated potassium channel. And basically, uh, again, what we can do is we can uh, voltage clamp uh, the uh, extracellular and the intracellular compartments. So this is the extracellular compartment. This is the intracellular compartment. So we can put a battery uh, between the two like this, which will hold that electrical potential difference across this membrane at negative 65 millivolts. And basically, uh, what, 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 we'll what we then do is we will stimulate this with a stimulating electrode again, and we want to study uh, the movement of electrons uh, by, uh, this, uh, by this system here, by this circuit system here, and we can use that to deduce the movement of potassium through this voltage-gated potassium channel. So, if we plot a similar graph to this one here for the potassium one, what we'll get is that initially you'll have no current flowing through this circuit here, so if I put an ammeter there, you'll have no current flowing through uh, the ammeter. 
uh, whilst whilst you've done nothing. So at the moment, the electrical potential difference across this membrane is fixed at minus 60 millivolts. We haven't done anything, so obviously the battery doesn't need to do anything. It's perfectly happy as it is. It's in equilibrium. So um, there's no current flowing through the circuit. Then what happens is that we stimulate it uh, with the stimulating electrode. So the stimulating electrode moves uh, negative charge uh, from uh, the intracellular uh, domain. So it's going to remove electrons, basically, going to be sucked up here. So that is going to raise the electrical potential difference across this membrane to negative 40 millivolts. Uh, well, it could, we want it to raise the electrical potential difference to minus 40 millivolts uh, so that we stimulate these potassium channels. Okay, uh, now initially what's going to happen is that this battery isn't going to like uh, the electrical potential difference being raised to negative 40 millivolts. So what's going to happen is that to compensate for that, it's going to move electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular. So if, again, if we plot the current from the intracellular to the extracellular, then the movement of negative charge from the extracellular to the intracellular is the same effectively as moving positive charge from the intracellular to the extracellular. Now, if you move positive charge from intracellular to extracellular, then positive charge is going through this uh, wire, i.e. positive charge is flowing from intracellular to extracellular. So the current from intracellular to extracellular is going to look like a little peak there. So that's the peak for the stimulating electrode. Now, uh, because uh, the... Um, because for a second, because, you know, for a little while, there was a um, charge, a depolarization of this membrane to negative 40 millivolts, this potassium channel is actually going to open. And when it opens, it's going to allow potassium to move from the intracellular to the extracellular compartment. So it's going to allow positive charge to flow this way. Now, if you move positive charge that way, then uh, if you want the electrical potential difference to remain the same across this membrane, then you need to move a negative charge to compensate in the same direction. So you need to move negative charge from the intracellular to the extracellular. That corresponds to a negative current from intracellular to extracellular. So what happens is that on this, uh, on this, the, when we record this current, which is what we're recording, we're going to see a little blip like that, which will correspond to the... Uh, electrons moving through this wire in order to compensate the movement of potassium through this uh, voltage-gated potassium channel. So basically, we can use this again to deduce uh, the movement of potassium through here. And what you find is that if you repeat this experiment uh, many, many times, you generally find that these channels take much longer to open than uh, potassium, than, sorry, than sodium channels. So they open much later than the sodium channels. And again, if you sum them all up, if you sum all of them up, uh, say do 100 and then sum them up, what you get is a result similar to the, uh, what you get if you do the two electro voltage clamp on the entire cell, i.e. you get an overall current that looks like what you get across the entire cell, basically. Uh, so everything's going well, basically. We can understand uh, the results of the two electro voltage clamp in terms of the, uh, uh, the experiments, in terms of um, a single voltage uh, gated ion channels uh, using the patch clamp technique.